2,000 kilometers, the railway cuts this exact distance through the lifeless Taklamakan Desert. Billions of tons of sand yield to the project that made American engineers notice China's determination. One can notice how the tracks divide the dunes, but this is just the beginning. Why fight through fierce sandstorms and scorching heat? The task appears daunting, yet the builders turned a sea of desert into a vital part of the world's longest railway network. President Xi Jinping's government invested over $3.5 billion in the initiative. More than 12,000 workers labored on the line for a full decade. At first glance, it seems like standard logistics, but in reality, it stands as a symbol of modern engineering. The story of this extraordinary achievement unfolds further. 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This scorching mark is reached by the surface temperature in the summer months. Why would engineers attempt to conquer a blank space on the map split by two massive mountain ranges? The Tarim Basin in China's northwestern region, encompassing Xinjiang, has remained isolated for decades. But beneath this unforgiving sea of dunes lie billions of tons of untapped energy and minerals. Oil, coal, and rare earth elements considered key to global technological dominance wait for extraction. However, to unlock these resources, the builders had to overcome a total absence of infrastructure. One can notice how the landscape of the Taklamakan Desert, covering more than 127,000 square miles, never stops moving. In winter, the thermometer drops to minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit, freezing the shifting sands. There is no water, no electricity, and absolutely no solid foundation to build upon beneath the feet. China undertook the construction of the Hotan Rokiang Railway, stretching 890 kilometers across the void. At first glance, laying tracks here seems impossible, but in reality, it was the only way to close the loop. This line became part of the Taklamakan Desert Loop, a circular network totaling 2,685 kilometers. One can observe the steel tracks running along the southern edge, defying the geological instability. And this is not the limit. Completed in June 2022, the line operates as the longest desert railway in the world. Before a single bridge or rail could be installed, engineers had to solve the problem of trajectory. It is visible how the dunes shift constantly, threatening to bury any static structure. The question of how to choose a route across a landscape that never stops moving dictated every design choice. Thousands of wind measurements established the direction of air currents. Satellite imagery and ground-penetrating radar map the dunes. Why is this precision needed? The sand looks still. But without data, sandstorms and wind corridors could sweep away trains. But this is just the beginning. Survey teams spent months living deep in the desert to drill hundreds of boreholes. One can notice how the drills bring up samples from tens of meters deep. This revealed zones with relatively stable ground. At first glance, the task seems simple, but in reality, the landscape never stops moving. Every marker was placed by hand engineers achieved centimeter level precision. The route had to avoid wind zones while staying close to oil and coal fields in the Tarim Basin. It gets more complex further on. Thus, the blank white space turns into a steel curve. 140 degrees Fahrenheit is the blistering heat under which the stabilization of the dunes began. Before the steel curve could wrap around the desert, Hundreds of local farmers were mobilized to anchor the shifting sands. Why arrange dry twigs and bamboo into a specific geometric pattern? At first glance, using primitive materials like straw seems simple. But in reality, this manual labor determines the project's fate. The layout breaks the wind's direct flow, scattering its force in different directions and forcing the sand to settle within each grid. Farmers bundled straw and thin bamboo into long sheaves before planting them. Each square measured exactly one square meter, arranged diagonally at 45 degrees instead of in straight lines. One can notice how they pressed every bundle deep into the soft dunes, 
covering them with an extra layer of twigs to make it hold. But this is just the beginning. It is visible how the first few grids quickly spread across the horizon, forming thousands of organic sand fences. After several months, these straw checkerboards blanketed hundreds of acres, stretching all the way to the farthest dunes. One can observe the once shifting desert turn into a stable patchwork of golden brown and green. The sand stopped moving completely and the ground hardened sufficiently. And this is not the limit. Heavy trucks could finally drive over the surface without sinking, allowing the massive construction to proceed calmly. Hundreds of bulldozers descend upon the dunes to flatten the high ridges and redistribute the material into lower areas. Why is such massive redistribution of sand necessary? To the eye, the desert floor appears solid enough for walking, but without creating a smooth, balanced surface, heavy construction machinery would face the immediate risk of collapse due to uneven support. Surveyors constantly monitor the elevation and slope to ensure uniformity across miles of open desert. One can notice how conveyor systems relentlessly push excess sand away from the active work zone. Compactors gently press the top layer to form a workable foundation. But this is just the beginning of the transformation. But even after leveling, the loose sand still requires deep stabilization before it can bear any significant load. Because injecting water helps bind the grains together, engineers utilize this method to create a denser and more cohesive layer. At first glance, spraying groundwater seems like a simple dust control measure, but in reality, it creates a structural bond between particles. Long sprinkler arms and underground pipes ensure moisture penetrates several inches deep to prepare the ground. One can hear the constant rumble of steel drums echoing across the desert as heavy rollers move in. They press the surface to forcibly remove air pockets and lock the particles in place once the sand reaches the right level of dampness. Soft, shifting sand turns into a firm, uniform base under the mechanical pressure. It is visible how the surface dries under the desert sun, hardening enough to carry the weight of cranes, mixers, and supply trucks. Everything only gets more complicated. A base layer of soil is strictly required over the stabilized sand to complete the process. Dump trucks pour out loads of reddish earth, which bulldozers then push and level across the entire area. This layer adds essential weight to the sand below, strengthening the surface and keeping it from shifting under heat or vibration. Each section is evenly spread and compacted to ensure consistency. Thus, a dense, stable base forms, strong enough to support the first stages of construction in the desert. 130 degrees Fahrenheit is the staggering temperature difference that construction crews faced between day and night in the open desert. Because of this extreme thermal fluctuation, workers operated mostly under the cover of darkness. When the fierce winds finally calmed and sandstorms eased, once the ground base was fully stabilized, the heavy machinery moved in to erect the bridge pillars. But this is just the beginning. Reinforced concrete piled drivers drilled tirelessly through dozens of feet of loose sand to reach the solid gravel or compact soil beneath. Why pump bentonite slurry into the boreholes during drilling? To the untrained eye, a hole in the sand might seem stable enough for a moment. However, the slurry creates a hydrostatic pressure that prevents the loose walls from collapsing inward before the concrete arrives. Steel casing pipes further secured the shafts, allowing operations to continue without interruption. One can notice how concrete flows through tremi pipes from the bottom up to prevent air pockets from forming. Crews positioned the steel reinforcement cages with millimeter precision as even the slightest misalignment could cause the pile to tilt or lose stability. Thanks to these steel and concrete piles, the railway's foundation seemed to grow roots deep into the shifting desert sands. It gets more complex further on. 11,000 bridge piers began to rise, row after row, forming a vast concrete forest stretching across the wasteland. 
Each pier stood between 16 and 50 feet tall, cast using slip form molds. Engineers reinforced the shafts with galvanized steel and added salt-resistant additives to the mixture to withstand the desert's corrosive climate. At first glance, the short uniform spans between piers look like a purely aesthetic choice, but in reality, they are designed to minimize the effects of wind and extreme temperature changes. As the sun sets behind the Kunlun Mountains, the endless lines of pillars stretch toward the horizon. One can see a skeleton of steel and concrete standing unshaken by the desert winds. And this is not the limit. Thousands of pre-stressed concrete box girders were lifted into place using heavy crawler cranes or self-launching gantries. Each girder measured over 100 feet long and weighed several hundred tons. Specialized flatbed rail cars transported these massive components, allowing them to be hoisted one by one onto the waiting piers. Engineers aligned the girders with laser precision, strictly keeping tolerances within just a few millimeters. Once the spans were secured, crews poured bridge deck slabs or installed precast concrete panels to form a smooth surface for the tracks. One can notice how the wind sweeps freely beneath every span, carrying drifting sand away so it never buries the line. Everything only gets more complicated. More than 65% of the Hooten Rakion Railway, totaling about 310 miles, runs on these elevated viaducts. From above, the railway appears like a silver ribbon cutting across an ocean of gold. It stands as a living monument to human ingenuity against one of Earth's harshest landscapes. 260 feet is the precise length of each steel rail used in this massive construction project against one of Earth's harshest landscapes. These rails must sit upon concrete blocks known as sleepers or railroad ties. They are placed evenly along the track bed to distribute the weight of passing trains and hold the steel in position. One can notice how workers align each sleeper with millimeter precision before the next stage begins. But this is just the beginning of the assembly. A lifting frame lowers the heavy rails onto the prepared concrete base. Why is the alignment of every joint and gap so critical in the desert? At first glance, Tightening clips seems like a standard mechanical task, but in reality, it prevents the line from bending under heavy loads. Without precise gaps for heat expansion, the intense sun would cause the metal to buckle and shift, destabilizing the line. Specialized cranes lift the steel sections into place along the center line, locking the rails onto the concrete base. Crews spent 11 months of continuous work to complete hundreds of miles of track stretching across the sands. Once the final bridge span was completed, the entire line entered a critical testing phase. Engineering trains ran up and down the route to measure settlement, vibration, and rail temperature. It is visible how the bridges hold firm under load tests, with trains weighing thousands of tons. It does not end at this stage. Results showed elevation deviations of only a few millimeters after hundreds of runs. Thanks to the elevated design and natural airflow beneath the viaducts, one can observe that no sand accumulates on the tracks. All operational data flows to the control center through IoT sensors and solar-powered cameras monitoring every section in real time. The process is only gaining momentum as the final verification approaches. After six months of rigorous testing, the Houghton Rokyong Railway officially opened in June 2022. This marked the completion of the 1,685-mile loop that circles the Tuck Lake. The infrastructure stands ready for operation, integrating high-tech monitoring with heavy industrial durability. 122 degrees Fahrenheit is the searing temperature engineers faced while carving a path through the sand. Alongside the railway circling the Taklamakan Desert, China constructed a highway cutting directly through the vast wilderness. This is the Tarim Desert Highway, linking the oasis cities of Luntai and Minfeng across more than 300 kilometers of the desert's core. Work launched in 1993, 
continuing for just over two years until the official opening on October 4, 1995. The project demanded an investment of 1.75 billion yuan, or roughly $260 million, amidst shifting dunes and violent sandstorms. Why invest millions in a road threatened by constant burial? It seems impossible to keep asphalt clear in such shifting terrain, but beneath the surface lies a multi-layer foundation of gravel, straw mats, and geotextiles designed specifically to lock the drifting sands in place. One can notice how the black asphalt cuts a sharp line through the inhospitable landscape. Today, this infrastructure connects isolated solar farms and scientific research outposts scattered across the region. It also serves as a vital passage for ecotourism, guiding travelers through terrain that was once considered impassable. But this is just the beginning of the engineering marvels here. To power both the desert highway and the parallel railway, a massive solar panel system spans the region. This area receives more than 2,700 hours of sunlight annually, ranking among the highest solar radiation zones globally. Instead of letting this energy burn the sand, engineers harnessed it. Along 436 kilometers of the highway, they installed 86 solar-powered pumping stations. Each facility is equipped with hundreds of photovoltaic panels generating electricity to draw groundwater from depths exceeding 100 meters. The water does not simply flow onto the surface. It gets more complex further on. An underground pipeline network distributes the liquid using precise drip irrigation technology. At first glance, the desert seems too arid for vegetation. But in reality, this system allows more than 200,000 trees to survive in a region with almost no rainfall. Consequently, the Tarim Highway has evolved into the world's first carbon-free desert expressway. Sunlight generates electricity, electricity produces water, and water sustains life. Solar energy does more than power street lights or run pumps. It sparks hope for environmental renewal. The Taklamakan, once known as the Sea of Death, is transforming into one of the largest ecological laboratories on Earth. As transportation became accessible, tourism in the desert began to thrive. Along the edges of the Taklamakan and Gobi deserts, vast man-made forests and reservoirs have been developed into parks combining research with visitor experiences. And this is not the limit. One can see travelers joining camel riding tours that cross the rolling dunes like ocean waves. These journeys last anywhere from two to five hours stopping at rest areas established in the middle of the sands. Community-based tourism blends these excursions with Uyghur and Mongolian cultural heritage, with each trip costing between 40 and 120 US dollars. By combining conservation, education, and real-world experience, the desert stands as proof that habitation in harmony with nature is achievable. The landscape continues its slow transformation under the relentless desert sun. Thousands of tons of heavy infrastructure now traverse the arid wasteland. One can notice heat haze shimmering above steel rails laid across the scorching sand. This construction connects shores previously separated by the impossible. But the process creates more than just a track. Why construct massive bridges where there is no water? The ground seems solid to the eye but elevation allows shifting dunes to pass underneath without burying the railway. Chinese engineers utilize steel and concrete to form the backbone of this complex. At first glance, the desert looks static, but in reality, it moves, requiring rigid stabilization. It is visible how concrete pillars stand in contrast to the dunes, defying natural erosion. The route remains stable, completing the engineering cycle 